thrilling story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. Eli Carson, today is perhaps the most momentous day of all. His son, Elliot, will stand before the parole board at the state prison. They will either send him back to Peyton Place or send him back to his cell. talk to you before I went to the parole hearing. Got a minute? Oh, well, sure. You won quite a fight. How do you feel? Well, I'm not quite sure how I feel. I mean, I'm glad to have my hospital privileges back and my reputation. It means I can practice again. It's as simple as that. But as far as dancing in the street go, I'm not so sure. How did it happen? What do you mean? Well, the hospital board did not reconvene. Bob Morton acted independently. All right, let's just say the case was reconsidered. Look, as a grizzled old reporter... Matt, as a grizzled old reporter, I'm sure you can guess that someone was hurt here. And you want to keep that hurt at a minimum. Interview finished. You probably thought I should have taken a stronger stand on this. Then I'm sure you acted as the facts were presented to you. Don't be big about this. You had every reason to be furious with me. I was. Last week. Well, let's see here. Pills, prescription pad, tongue depressors. Looks like I'm back in business, eh? Wait a minute, I forgot the most important thing of all. Suckers for the kids. Owen? How are you traveling? Hi, boss. Well, I'll walk you down. What time's the hearing? From two o'clock. Matt, what's going to happen if Elliot decides to come back to Peyton Place? They'll work on the Chandler. Will that upset a lot of people? Like whom? Well, I don't know. I don't know who his friends were. Or his enemies. Matt. Dr. Rossi. Hello, Eli. Good morning, Mr. Carson. I'm going with you, Matt. Well, that's not necessary. Not necessary. It's the most important day in my son's life. I just want to be there when he gets his freedom. What if he doesn't? What if there's some disappointment? Where's my bus? Man, doctor, don't make me beg you. Michael? You won't get upset? No, I won't. I won't. All right. Good luck, Mr. Carson. Thank you, Doctor. Bye, man. You know how it is, don't you, Matt? Yes, I know. Sometimes the person just can't stand and wait. you that. You gotta have a brain to have a concussion. <laughs> How's Julie? She hasn't nobody to see you? No. Well, I guess both of us figured we could use a couple of days to cool off. She's still at the McKenzie's. Oh. Well, good. She can use the rest. Uh, you gonna spring me today, Doc? I think so, if you can take it easy. Sure, sure, I can take it easy. I feel fine. That clout on the head that Julie gave me sure cured the headaches. <laughs> I feel great. 
the headaches are gone, it's being here that's helped. Yeah, it's probably the rest, probably. More than the rest, you know, some people feel more safe in a hospital, safe from themselves. <laughs> you're still trying to play psychiatry, don't you, Doc? I'd rather not. <laughs> you bonds, you're gonna get me to some doctor in Boston. What do you do, get a kickback? <laughs> yeah, George, I get a kickback. <laughs> well, like I told you, in your office, it's something to think about. Something to think about right now, George. I talked to Julie about it. Oh? Think that it happened. You talked to Julie, huh? I talked to her, and she's gonna stay with Constant and Allison for a while. I see. You just sat down and talked to Julie over a cup of something, and you decided Georgie Boy was out of the picture, huh? Well, where do you fit in? I'll decide when my marriage is finished. And I'll tell you when I need your help in any department. Thank good, George. Make me. Go ahead. You're not my doctor anymore. You said I wasn't a patient anymore, just a man. Go ahead, make me. What would it do? What would it do? Relieve all the tension in there. Remove all the clicks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. George, your marriage isn't finished. <laughs> 20 years. I don't even know how to pick out my own neckties. There's still time to save your marriage. Sure. The life you saved may be, may be your own. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. George. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, doctor, I am scared. George, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> sure, sure. Hello, Daddy. Dr. Rossi. Hello, Betty. How are you? Me? Oh, I'm fine. Ask old Sawbones here. He put me back together again. I guess he got all the pieces in the right places. Your father is going to be able to go home today, Betty. That's wonderful. I'll drive you if you'd like. Oh, you bet I'd like. That would make the whole trip worthwhile. Well, I'll sign you out at the desk. Good, good. Uh, pills or anything? No, no, just rest. I want you to come by and see me at the office tomorrow. All right, doctor. You're calling the shots. <laughs> the shots, get it? Yes. <laughs> good night. Dr. Rossi. Well, uh, how are you, honey? Oh, I'm all right. And, uh, Rod? He's all right, too, Daddy. He doesn't sound that way. I'm sorry. I guess I should cheer up the patient, bring you good news. But there isn't any. Honey. I'll get you close. Yeah, well, there isn't much to pack. You know old Daddy likes to travel light. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I guess I could use a shave, huh? You can shave at home. I don't want to go home. I mean, I, I have to go back to the office for a while. Dr. Rossi said you should rest. Well, you can't just leave a business like that. I've got good clients waiting. Have you? Oh, boy, what a week. You'd have thought everybody in Peyton Place suddenly decided they need insurance. Did you uh, hear what happened? Daddy, let's talk in the car. Can you imagine? A grown man tripping over a life cord. Daddy, let's talk later. <laughs> As usual, I didn't look where I was going, and suddenly, wham, out like a light. Daddy. Your mother told me what happened. She told me about the business, too. Oh, she shouldn't have done that. She just shouldn't have done it. What should she have done, lied? That's a way to keep a family together, isn't it? You lied to her, she lied to you, and uh, I lied to Rod. Don't you see, all we've got left is our lies. You get dressed, I'll wait outside. Rossi says he can come home today. What happened, Julie? He saw me leaving your office. Unless I thought he was going to kill me. The reason you came to my office was to help Julie. Yes, but he doesn't know that. He wouldn't believe me if I told him. I'm going to leave him, Les. 
I have to. It's too dangerous. I wish I could say I was sorry. Well, it's not forever. George needs help, the kind of help I can't give him. What are you going to do? I don't know, sir. I thought maybe I'd uh, move someplace for a while. Where? I don't know. California, New York, Florida. That won't solve anything. I just can't seem to think here, Matt. Let me think for you, Julie, just for a while. Come back to the mill. You'll need a job. Les, if I go to work for you, it'll only make things worse again. And going away, that won't solve anything for anyone. Maybe things just don't solve. Julie. Les, it's true. Maybe they just don't. Oh, wait, I'll drive you on home. Oh, that's okay, honey. You've got things to do. Daddy. Well, I'll take it easy. Cross my heart. All right, patient dismissed. Honey, can I ask you something? Sure, Daddy. Well, Dr. Ross, he said... Oh, boy, this is right out of left field. Honey, do you think I need a psychiatrist? I don't know. Do you think so? Well, I don't know either. That's just the trouble. It seems to me that a, a man of my age with a grown daughter ought to be ashamed to, to need him more. But, like you said, all we've got left is the lies. Oh, I didn't say that to hurt you, Daddy. I know you didn't, honey. Betty, would you be ashamed of me? Ashamed, Daddy? I... No, I'd be proud. You would be? I know it sounds silly, but I would be. Oh, Daddy, I would be. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, baby. Hey. Look at us crying on each other's shoulders right out here in public. <laughs> oh, my. We'll be the talk of Peyton Place. <laughs> you just watch. You wait and see. I... Oh, boy, I'll be the patient to end all patients. I'll keep that doctor up nights trying to figure me out. You want that hard to figure out? No. Well, thanks for the lift. George. I didn't know whether I'd find you here or not. I just came to clean my desk out. I thought you'd go straight on home. Oh. Did you? Did you talk to Dr. Rossi? No, Julie. He talked to me. George, I am sorry. So am I, Julie. I, uh, I have the checkbook here for you, and, uh, Last month's statement. These bills can wait. These can't. I just saw Les Harrington. Was he up here? Yes. There are also some uh, premiums due next week. Now, if you'd like, I'd uh, be happy to type them for you before I go. What's your hurry, Julie? Do you want to wrap up 20 years in 20 minutes? I'm just trying to make it easier for both of us. Oh, is that what you want? To make it easy? The least Harrington could have done was to wait till the body was cold. But 
not go through that again, George. We're not going through anything, sweetheart. George, please. Don't worry. I'm not going to do anything. I just want you to know one thing, Julie. I'm not going to give you any divorce. You don't give a divorce, George. Not after all we've been through. Oh, you just accept it. Is that what you mean? Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on, Julie. I don't know anything anymore. But I do. I accept it. You go running off to Harrington. Don't you stop, George. Don't you ever stop. Did it ever occur to you that a woman can be pushed to the place where she doesn't want a man? She doesn't want love. All she wants is a room of her own and a door to lock at night. Oh, you, Julie? Yes, me. You're wonderful, Julie. Uh, I'm not going to let you go. You know that, don't you? Well, I am going. And if you try to stop me, I'll open that window and I'll yell for the police. And you don't want that any more than I do, George, because we've humiliated ourselves enough in this. <laughs> oh, the people it takes to break up a marriage. Police, doctors, psychiatrists. It only took the two of us to make it. That was 20 years ago. 20 years, George. <laughs> Thank you, Connie. Hello. Hello, Mother. Hello, Mrs. Foley. You're playing hooky today, Alice. No, I just took my lunch hour off. I'm going to the dentist. Oh, you poor dear. It's just for a checkup. I don't go anymore. Every time he checks, he finds something. I just don't go anymore. <laughs> That's one way of handling it. <laughs> Thank yes. you, Sarah. Thank you, Connie. Enjoy it. Bye. Bye, Allison. Goodbye. I got you some milk and a sandwich. <laughs> I got me some milk and a sandwich, too. <laughs> we got our wires crossed. Maybe I'll be famished. And I won't be very long. Okay. Mother, I noticed the chandlery's closed. Is Mr. Carson sick? Well, I, I think he went to the parole hearing. Oh. I saw him and Uncle Matt walk by. <laughs> Was he nervous? Who? Mr. Carson. Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't stop them, Allison. You didn't. I would have wanted to wish him luck or something. Maybe I should have. How do you spell the name of that town in Scotland where father was born? Christwick. Hmm. C-R-I... Why don't you look it up on the map? What's that? It's just papers. What kind of papers? It's an application to Peyton College. Oh. When did all this happen? Nothing's happened, Mother. It's just an application. What about Sarah Lawrence and Wellesley and... I might not get a scholarship. Oh, but you will. If you don't, we'll find some other way to send you. Allison, you're not staying home because of me. I can't start Wellesley or Sarah Lawrence mid-year. I can always go next term. But will you? I don't know. Mother, do you want me to go away? Well, I want you to have the best education possible. I want you to know more of the world than Peyton Place. Alice, I'd never send you away. It'd be late for your dentist appointment. An application. I know. But I want you to know how I feel. Okay. Mother, I guess I wanted you to know how I feel, too. 
else I could have looked on the map of Scotland myself. I won't be long. the prison parole officer. Mr. Massey, is this gentleman related to the prisoner? I am his father. Mr. Carson, it's highly irregular for relatives to be present at these hearings. Well, you see... Well, if Elliot does win his parole, he'll work for his father. Mr. Carson wanted to assure he was a job waiting for him. And you, Mr. Swain, you're here as what? An interested party? I'm a character witness. I've known Elliot all his life. I see. Carson, I must advise you that we cannot allow you to plead your son's case in any way. I know that. I don't want to break any rules. Why don't you sit down over there? Thank you. Mr. Carson, what kind of work would your son be doing? Beg pardon? What kind of business do you own? Ship's chandlery. Been in the family for more than a hundred years. I'm something of a sailor myself. Weekend variety. I think we'd better get down to business. Now, Carson has appeared before this board many times. There's a great deal of uh, bad time on his record. From his earlier years. Yes, his later record looks very good. The change is so marked. I wonder about it. Could indicate a credit to our prison system, wouldn't it, Commissioner? Well, perhaps. Do you have the psychiatric report? Yes, Commissioner. Dr. Arthur has interviewed the prisoner on several occasions. The most recent interview was 10 days ago. And? The prisoner scores in the superior range on the Wexler intelligence scale. Mm, that's better than some of us would do. Commissioner? The prisoner's behavior in recent years suggests that his impulses to violence, the compulsive resistance to authority, the refusal to obey orders, are now well under control. His attitude about his imprisonment seems admirably rational. But I must question how authentic that rational attitude really is. For all his intelligence and appeal, the subject seems at heart to be a withholding type. A man adept at concealing his feelings whenever it serves his ends. Furthermore, an interpretation of his Rorschach responses suggests that those violent impulses still exist and are held in check by design, conscious or unconscious. Well, does Dr. Arthur make any recommendations regarding parole? No, he only reports his findings. Well, let's make some determinations of our own. Would you have Carson brought in, please? Bring in Elliot Carson. Continuing story of Peyton Place. Well, you just hold on, baby. Don't you give an inch. What am I going to hold on to, Daddy? And you do know the circumstances of Allison's birth, but I've never told you about her father. He's alive. That's the second hardest thing I've ever had to say. Elliot has paid his debt to society. Carson is a murderer. A convicted murderer. What do you want him to say, Commissioner? That I shouldn't go home? 